Hey, what's up everyone? Alex here. So we're back with another episode of the Othello Board Review. So this is episode 3 and we'll be covering on the Othello Kiwami Board. So in episode 2, uh, you might have seen we've covered Othello Kiwami Junior Board, which is the smaller version of this board, uh, which won the Good Design Award. So uh, yeah, let's jump into this board. So this is the probably the older version of the box uh, back when it was released and you can see that it's a very special board. It's more squarish in nature, including the border itself. And you also have the same kind of design in a sense that when you push down the board, it actually uh, flips on a three-sided axle. So you won't lose any pieces at all. Very interesting board, uh, this one. So you can see it's Kiwami, Othello Kiwami. And you have, you know, the Japan Othello Association. Let's just flip to the back of the board. So they have some details. So it covers on uh, Goro Hasegawa, you know, Othello being played on the green board with black lines and black and white pieces, how many has been sold worldwide, and of course, uh, some basic rules to the game, and maybe basic strategy, and some information on Japanese, uh, the, the Japan Mega House company that released this product. So let's just open up this uh, product quickly. So... The box basically opens this way. So let's just unbox this. So I'll just put this box uh, to the back. And then you basically have this board uh, protector, cardboard piece, and you have this board. So almost as good as new. And you have some basic info sheets behind. So let's just put a board down this way, just for a better view. So. Basically, it's a three-way axle, a larger version of uh, essentially the board that we talked about before. So you can see um, something that is very interesting over here is the black concentric circles that I spoke of in episode two when covering the Othello Kiwami Junior board. So even though the Othello Kiwami Junior board, all of the pieces are smooth, but if you look at this board, you can notice some concentric circles on the black pieces. And the white is actually essentially a smooth surface. So the interesting thing about this concentric circles, the function of this, is actually to allow uh, people who are visually impaired or blind people who cannot see to actually play the game. So in Japan, there are actually people who are blind who actually plays the Otello game. So very interesting. So they will just feel the board position. So they know that by just the sense of touch, you know that this is black, this is white and then they can picture the board position and essentially they can decide to make a move so they will just press it down here play their black move and then essentially flip the disc to black so that's how it goes and they make the move and then their hands will go off their opponent will then feel the board position kind of understand where it is, where it's positioned and then they will start to play uh, their move here so I would say this board uh, size is actually uh, almost about 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters, slightly smaller, uh, maybe 30 cm by 30 cm, slightly smaller, smaller than the official board, but it's still a very good size, especially, you know, if you just lay your palms down, you can realize you're only just covering half the board. It's very good. Uh, but for blind people, uh, essentially this board is perfect because you can actually picture the position by touching the discs and just understanding the board position and you know which one is your, essentially your, <laughs> legal move here. So interestingly, when I attended my first World Tele Championship in 2011, somebody introduced me to this board and we actually tried to play Blind Otello. So um, just using our sense of touch, just trying to picture the position on the board. I can tell you it's a lot harder than you <laughs> probably think uh, it is. So it's definitely not easy, even by the sense of touch, to be able to kind of understand the entire board position, uh, especially towards the end game in terms of how complex it is. It's very, very difficult. So interestingly, there is a Hong Kong Othello player by the name of uh, Kelvin. And yeah, he hails from Taiwan, but he's based out of uh, Hong Kong uh, when I got to know him. He's a blind Othello player, and he's a very, very strong player. So he's somebody who's kind of practiced and mastered uh, essentially playing Othello blind just by touching the board. So he goes around the World Othello Championship with his own board. Um, he doesn't use this particular board uh, but he uses a, a board that is uh, slightly smaller, a magnetic board. But still, on all of discs, uh, on the black side, there is always that sticker that he places so that there is some form of uh, surface texture so that he can identify which one is black, which one is white. 
So yeah, one of the more challenging things about playing a blind opponent is um, you tend to underestimate their ability to, to read the, the board situation and then, you know, he's actually a fantastic player who can easily score maybe 7-8 to eight win, wins at the World Title Championship. So he's not far from being at the top 2 tier levels of uh, Othello, for sure. So yeah, this board, essentially, um, pricing-wise, I would say, uh, if you went to buy in uh, Japan locally, you probably get it somewhere around 3,000 Japanese yen back then, which is about 30 US dollars. And then in terms of the overall rating, uh, in terms of the overall experience that you have playing on this board, I would say it's very useful in the sense that, you know, all of the discs are attached to the board surface. You probably won't lose any discs, not unless you knock them out. But essentially, the playing experience is slightly different from the usual official Otello board. So it's similar to the Otello Kiwami Junior board, uh, but it's just slightly bigger. I would rate this board quality, uh, you know, very high. But in terms of the overall playability, I would say that, you know, it's probably less common that we use this board, uh, even compared to the Otello Kiwami Jr., that it's uh, fairly portable. So I rate this as, uh, you know, maybe a 9 out of 10. Fantastic quality, but uh, probably not that practical for most people who bring about the board. Uh, usually we want to practice flipping the discs in actual sense. So this is fantastic for, uh, you know, people who just want to have a big size board, but you know, playing more like a <laughs> like a Odin style, uh, you know, uh, Wheel of Fortune where they flip the the surface. So it's it's quite interesting in that sense. So I would say uh, I re, re I kind of recommend this board for visually impaired people for sure uh, because of the concentric circles design and of course for people who are afraid that their children may lose their discs. This is fantastic for you as well. So if you're a casual player, why not try this board? This board is perfect for, you know, casual players and, you know, maybe for children uh, whom you don't want to kind of spend time picking up the pieces <laughs> that have dropped on the floor compared to maybe magnetic uh, sets or the official Otello board. So still a very wonderful board to have and hopefully you enjoy this episode and this product and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.